Do you ever buy something on Marketplace, think that it's wonderful, even talk them down a little bit, and then bring it home and be like, what the heck did I buy? <laughs> There's some good things on this, and we're gonna show you some ways to address the problems and fix them. Good things or bad things. First off, the top drawer is totally missing the bottom, which wouldn't be a big ordeal, except for this is serpentine, which means it's curvy. You can't just stick a piece of wood on it. Second, there is a giant hole on one side and the other side is completely water damaged. On Facebook Marketplace, I made the mistake of not scrolling through all the pictures. The last picture did show the hole, but with the black paint finished, it looked pretty good and I may have bought a lemon. Don't forget, the top used to have a veneer on it and the wood that was underneath the veneer has wormholes, but the veneer has been removed by somebody down the road and just stained, so we got wormholes in the top too. We're gonna leave those. <laughs> okay, first things first, we're gonna repair this veneer damage that's on the inside. I'm using the bandsaw to cut this out. You could use a jigsaw or a handsaw, a coping saw. Doesn't matter, I'm just cutting a small little section that'll fit down on the inside of that panel. Okay, that covers up that hole really nicely and reinforces the other hole that's kind of starting in the bottom here. Enter Bondo all-purpose putty. I'm gonna get a good daub of it. Cream hardener. All right, that looks like a mess, but we're gonna leave that built up a little bit high so we can sand that down flush. All right, so this runner here was broken off. I'm just going to measure right here. Cut it back a little far. All right, so here's where things start to get a little tricky. I'm just gonna mark under here with the pencil. And this is just half inch MDF. You could use plywood, but half inch is the right perfect height for these runners. Okay, so my runner mark runner mark, and then outside. That slides on real nice. We'll glue that down in a little bit when we're ready and then nail it too. We're gonna flip this over and just trace. You wanna be a little proud. You don't wanna cut it all the way back, so make sure your mark, when you're looking at it from the top view, you have a little bit, you can sand it flush. Okay, that fits in real nice. Now we still have this little gap where it's actually broken and Bondo is once again going to be our friend. The other stoppers are no longer gonna work on the front of the drawer because I put that new lip on there. So I'm gonna use this little block as the new stopper. covering up the repair with a little bit of little black dress. That way when we distress it, just black comes through. All right, now on to the main event. We have textured wallpaper. We're gonna cut it to size. And while we could just paint this side and just leave it as is because the Bondo repair is gonna be nice and strong and flush, we wanted to do something a little more exciting. Well, the other side has water damage. Yeah. So it's a little bit uneven. So this should cover it up on both sides. Plus I have something fun. All right, so we're just cutting this to fit. Hopefully those are straight lines. So. so this we just bought at Home Depot, but you can order textured wallpaper online from a decor store, um, from your local hardware store. I like the design on this. It looks kind of like ceiling tin to me. It cuts pretty easy, so I'm pressing real lightly, not even hard enough to cut through the drop cloth. Well, that's good, because that's my counter underneath. Yep. Yeah. This is really handy to have. If you don't have a straight edge um, piece of board or something like that would work too. Seeing if it 
this because I don't want it to have any like rolling or anything like that. We're gonna be using DIY's liquid patina because not only is it a top coat and a transfer gel for images, it's also a decoupage medium and it will do a very good job of holding this up. Plus it's all natural, non-VOC, and I can use it inside. Just apply it with a Wooster foam brush and I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the liquid patina on the dresser and then I will put some of it on the actual wallpaper itself. I cut it to fit just perfect, so you Ew. should be able to just smooth that down. You are a magician. Always dry fit it first, because you can cut it before you get it on. I'm using my IOD brayer to just take and go right over this wallpaper and make sure that there's contact at every point. Last step is I'm just taking a damp cloth and I'm getting the paper wet because in the directions it's supposed to go through like this water machine thing, I don't know. But I'm not doing that for a little piece of paper. So I'm just getting it wet with my wet rag and working out the uh, bumps there. What we're gonna do is throw on a coat of Little Black Dress. So that way when we put the white paint over the whole dresser, we can wet distress back to this black color. So now that this drawer is painted, this is the repair drawer. It's really hard to tell that there was anything going on on that, that it was broken. Oh, surprise Jack in the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a quick coat of liquid patina over the top of this black. So that way when we wet distress it, the black will stay and I won't get all the way down through to the repair area. Now the black paint is dry, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a quick coat of the liquid patina to finish the decoupaging, also to seal in the black paint so when I wet distress, I'll be able to see all those details without going all the way through to the paper. So Jack wanted to help out and he's just gonna dip the tip of the brush in the paint and not get too much on there. And then he's gonna brush on the drawer that we already liquid patinaed and nice even strokes. Here, let me hold your hand, let me show you. There you go. Always go the same direction, huh, Jack? All right, I'll let you do it for a little bit. Very good. It's hard because the dress is curvy. Our liquid patina is dry. We did get some bubbling, but as the patina started to dry, it's kind of sucked those bubbles down and then I kind of worked them out with my fingers. I feel like it's pretty good. Once we get it painted, we can't tell. We did try popping a few of them. It didn't really make a difference. Just kind of work those bubbles down and push them. Now, if you're not going to do a wet distress and you're just going to paint over the top of it, I would still suggest putting a coat of that liquid patina over the top because the decoupage needs to be underneath and on top to really get that paper to adhere to your piece. This is what we do on Friday nights. Yeah, we, we paint furniture under the uh, the heat lamps, also known as uh, what we use for fill lighting. <laughs> I'm kind of going in different directions, but then smoothing it out because I got to get down in all these like nooks and cranny of this beautiful wallpaper situation. I come to you from the top of my kitchen island <laughs> using dark and decrepit. So this was already stained in dark walnut when we got it. It just has some scratches and imperfections. I'm gonna go right over the top of the already stained finish and just do one quick coat of the dark and decrepit. I will seal it with a few coats of liquid patina. The thing about the top of this dresser is that the sides are going another direction. So I'm going to smooth this off. You wanna go with the grain and on the sides, the grain is going this way. So. I don't even know if this can be called a second coat of paint. It's more of just a uh, touch up coat. Well, there's some areas where the previous paint finish was that definitely needed it. This paper really absorbs the paint and products so it doesn't take too much to 
get it done. But you can see right here, it's a little bit streakier and that's where that original black paint finish was. I'm just gonna do a quick distress on the drawer fronts to bring some of that black through. We're using the orbital sander. It's got 220 grit sandpaper on it. It feels weird to be wet distressing paper, but if I did this correct, I should be able to pull out this detail. So you wouldn't want to use sandpaper on this, so wet distress is the perfect option to bring the black coat back through. We could leave it as is, but this is a dresser top. They get a lot of abuse, so I'm just gonna put one more coat of the clear liquid patina on top to seal it. You could also use another coat of the dark and decrepit and that would be fine, but I don't wanna make it any darker than it already is. I really love the look that we have going on. This will dry somewhere between a matte and a satin finish, similar to wax, which is great because we are actually going to wax the base. I love a soft wax finish. All right, you tell me. Which one was fixed, the one on the left or the one on the right? I'm gonna put two coats of clear wax on this base and then tomorrow morning we'll come back in and buff it smooth. You won't see that on this video because we're finishing the video tonight, but just know that we have buffed the wax. I'm using DIY clear wax. You just let it sit overnight and then you buff it and it creates a pretty great sheen. The harder you buff, the better sheen you'll get. And you can layer it up for more protection. A lot of people tell me, oh, I thought you had to re-wax every year. I have never had to re-wax a piece that I've done with DIY paint. Knobs were half off at the Hobby Lobby, so we got these tasteful glass knobs. Well, I don't know about tasteful. I wanted clear, you wanted gold, and these were the perfect compromise. Gold is back in and it goes real well with the white and the black. I actually like them because they're dressy and I think with this new textured wallpaper, this is definitely a dressy dresser. They almost match the pattern that's in the center of the wallpaper squares. Totally intentional. Do you have paint on your hands? No. There's white paint on my knob. They wanted $75 for this dresser. Jamie talked him down to $50 for this dresser and it should have been free 99. Or maybe like 20 bucks because it took a couple hours of repairs and we like to make about $50 a repair hour and it definitely wasn't worth that because normally for a dresser like this, I pay 50 bucks, I paint it and move on. But lesson learned, swipe through, check all the pictures. The wallpaper on the side turned out to be a little bit extra work, but turned out amazing. It looks like ceiling tin tile, which is exactly what I wanted. I paid $50 for this dresser. I'm into it about 50 or 60 bucks in supplies and we'll sell it for $295. If you like this look and you wanna achieve something similar, the wallpaper's from Home Depot, but you can find the rest of the paint and products at jamierayvintage.com. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.